You're thinking about buying a graphics card. After some research, you've decided to go for the NVIDIA RTX 4070. When you check out the 4070 GPUs, you come across brands like MSI and Gigabyte. Each of these cards has different cooling performance and build quality, which can even lead to performance differences. If you're unsure which graphics card to choose among these, you're in the right video. In this video, we'll make a tier list for the most well-known GPUs of the NVIDIA RTX 4000 series. You'll find out which cards are a good choice and which ones aren't. So, let's get started. First, let me explain the ranking method. I created this ranking by averaging the performance of all RTX 4000 series cards for each model. So, if a graphics card has a good RTX 4060 version, but a worse 4070 version, I base the ranking on the average of both performances. To keep the video short, I'm showing the other criteria on the screen. You can pause the video to check them. Also, you can find the sources I used for comparing the graphics cards in the description. Let's start with the F tier. In this tier, you'll find graphics cards that I think you should avoid. If your budget isn't too low, I wouldn't recommend buying them. Their cooling performance and build quality aren't very good. Gainward Ghost. I've listed it as the worst card in the list due to its cooling performance and build quality. Palette is another brand that makes the same cards as Gainward but with different names. Since their cooling performance and build quality are different, we can say Palette is a bit better. If you're buying a Gainward card, I'd recommend getting the Dual instead of the Ghost. Gigabyte Windforce 2X. The build quality is better than the Dual and Ghost, but it's very loud. Additionally, the fans run at high speeds constantly, which is why I'm placing this card in the F tier. The noise level of this card can reach serious levels like 45 decibels in some cards. On top of that, some graphics cards are so small that they can't fully benefit from the airflow inside the case, which affects their cooling performance. MSI Ventus 2X. The RTX 4000 series GPUs of this graphics card show some improvement compared to the RTX 3000 series, but they still aren't the best options. Since it's not as loud as the Wind Force, I'm placing this card higher up. While I would say don't buy for the RTX 3000 series GPUs of this graphics card, I can say if you can catch a good discount, go ahead and buy it for the RTX 4000 series cards. Before we move on to the graphics cards in the D tier, there's something I'd like to mention. If you spend a lot of time online, you know how crucial it is to have a browser that keeps up, and that's why I love using Opera. One of Opera's standout features, Tab Islands, helps me organize my research better. I can group related tabs into different islands, add emojis for quick identification, and easily navigate between tasks. This reduces clutter, which is perfect when managing multiple projects. But that's just the start. Opera also includes Aria, an AI tool that goes beyond just browsing. It helps with translating content, summarizing lengthy documents, and even answering questions directly within the browser. You can access Aria from a quick keyboard command, perfect for when you need assistance on the fly. For content creators like me, Opera's built-in AI tools, like its image generation feature, are a huge plus. I can generate custom visuals, saving time when designing my thumbnails. And when it's time to unwind, Opera has seamless integration with social media and streaming platforms, allowing me to relax without having to switch tabs or even leaving the browser. If you're ready to enhance your browsing experience, you can download Opera for free using the link below. Now let's get back to it. The graphics cards in the D tier are much better than those in the F tier. There might be price differences, but in terms of quality, they are definitely better than those in the F tier. These are the lowest graphics cards that I consider worth buying. Gigabyte Windforce 3X. The issue with the Windforce GPUs is still the same. The Windforce 3X works as loudly as the 2X. If we compare the Windforce 3X with the MSI Ventus 3X, the MSI Ventus works much quieter than the Windforce. Both have three fans, but their cooling performance is worse compared to other three fan cards. Zotac Twin Edge. If you're looking for a reliable, affordable, and dual fan GPU, this could be a good choice. Since it provides what I expect from a dual fan GPU, I'm more lenient toward it compared to the three fan Windforce and Ventus graphics cards, placing it higher. Eno 3D Twin X2. This graphics card has good cooling performance, but its build quality is a bit weak. Since its cooling performance is a bit better than Zotax, I'm placing it higher. Asus Dual. One of the most well-known graphics cards, and it really deserves this reputation. Its build quality is average, but its cooling performance is good. 
There are different GPUs of the ASUS Dual, including V2, Evo, and the Dual SSD Edition with an M2 SSD slot on the back. There aren't significant differences among them, but you should be aware of these GPUs. This is important because many people mistakenly bought the Dual Mini GPU instead of the ASUS Dual in the RTX 3000 series. I don't want you to make the same mistake. MSI Gaming X with two fans. Overall, I can say it's a better card compared to the ASUS Dual, since it operates more quietly while delivering similar temperatures and has better build quality, I place it ahead of the ASUS Dual. Palette Jetstream and Gainward Panther. They can provide good cooling performance thanks to the third fan, but the build quality isn't great. You can consider them if you're only looking for good cooling performance. Zotac Trinity. The build quality of these graphics cards is good, but in some GPUs, the cooling is loud. Since the build quality is better, I've placed it ahead of the Panther and Jetstream GPUs. Inno 3DX3. In areas where the Trinity struggles, this GPU performs better. Its cooling performance is better than that of the Trinity. As for build quality, while some graphics cards might be better than the Trinity, others may be weaker. They can vary depending on the GPU. Gigabyte Eagle. This GPU has shown significant improvement in the RTX 4000 series compared to the RTX 3000 series. You might have seen that some users with the 3070 Ti Eagle were reporting high GPU memory temperatures. I haven't encountered these issues with the RTX 4000 series GPUs. By the way, this card works as loudly as the WinForce, but its cooling performance and build quality are better. For this reason, I place it here in the tier list. Now let's move on to the C tier. You can confidently buy the graphics cards in this tier. If you're not interested in overclocking, these cards will satisfy you plenty. Of course, you can overclock with these cards, but some of the GPUs in this tier are more suitable for it. Zotac Ampi Aero. I had a bit of difficulty deciding where to place this card. Due to its cooling performance and build quality, I decided to put it in the C tier. There isn't much else to say. MSI Gaming X Slim. The build quality is quite good, but it runs 5 to 6 degrees Celsius hotter than the MSI Gaming Trio. For this reason, I placed it slightly lower. Palette Gaming Pro and Gainward Phoenix. These two are once again side by side. Although there are differences in cooling and build quality between them, it's fair to say their build quality falls a bit short for the C tier. Inno 3D iChill X3. Many people confuse this card with the Inno 3D X3, but they are different, so don't mix them up. Its build quality is slightly better than the Inno 3D X3. Some graphics cards experience a drop in cooling performance as GPU models increase. However, the iChill X3 does not have this issue. In terms of cooling performance, it can compete with the Gaming X Trio, which I'll talk about shortly. MSI Gaming X Trio. This is one of the most competitive cards in the C tier. It performs very well in terms of cooling. However, due to its build quality, I can't place it in a higher tier. Gigabyte Arrow the white version of the Gigabyte Gaming OC. The build quality of both cards is the same and quite good. Due to the design, there can be a temperature difference of one degree Celsius between them. Like other Gigabyte cards, some GPUs can be loud, but the cooling performance is good and it is a good graphics card that I would recommend. I placed it above the MSI Gaming X Trio due to its better build quality. Asus Tough and ProArt. These graphics cards share a similar fate with the Aero and Gaming OC. However, they are better in terms of cooling performance and build quality, uh, which is why I place them above the others. Actually, I think the ProArt GPUs were designed for those who want to build a full ProArt build. As you might guess, an ASUS Tough graphics card doesn't look great inside an all-black minimal case. In terms of quality, ProArt cards are very similar to Tough cards, but it's worth noting that there are small differences in clock speeds and sizes. Now let's move on to the B tier. In the B tier, there are graphics cards that didn't make it to the best of the best category, but I still find them quite successful. Asus Noctua. I find this GPU quite successful. It's amazing that an RTX 4080 with two fans can operate quietly. The build quality is quite good, but the design might not appeal to everyone. Many people, including myself, find this card quite ugly. By the way, you might think the card is very small just because it has two fans, but you're mistaken. Its thickness is greater than most three fan cards. Keep that in mind. Zotac AMP Extreme. A great GPU in terms of build quality, but like most Zotac cards, this one also has a common issue. Its fans can be a bit loud. As a result, I place this GPU a bit lower in the tier. The size of these cards is larger than that of the AMP Aero. I placed it higher than the Asus Noctua because I think most people would like the look of this card more. Gainward Phantom and Palette Gamerock. 
These GPUs are side by side on the list again. The design of the Palette Gamerock is quite nice, just like in the RTX 3000 series. If you're planning to build an RGB PC, you might want to choose this GPU. The build quality seems slightly lower compared to the RTX 3000 series, but it's still good. Gigabyte Aorus Elite. These are the best GPUs from Gigabyte among those that don't have the Aorus Master model. I placed it here because its build quality and cooling performance are quite good. The Aorus Elite has some minor differences compared to the Aorus Master. If you're looking at a graphics card that has both the Aorus Elite and Master models, the differences between them are mostly design related. In terms of build quality, they are very similar. Now it's time for the Kings. Let's take a look at the cards in the A tier. The A tier contains the highest quality graphics cards on the market. They are often used to show off due to their high price. For an average user, I think these cards are unnecessary. MSI Supreme. The RTX 4000 series GPUs of this card are slightly weaker compared to the RTX 3000 series, but their cooling performance is still very good. There are other models with better build quality than this card. This doesn't make the MSI Supreme bad, but it does place it lower in the ranking. The good cooling performance of this graphics card is enough for me to recommend it. ASUS ROG Strix. I initially ranked the ROG Strix as the best graphics card in the tier list, but later decided it didn't quite deserve the top spot due to a minor issue. If you do some research on forums, you'll often see that ASUS ROG Strix cards are recommended to people looking to buy a graphics card. These really are some of the best graphics cards you can find in terms of build quality and cooling performance. However, these cards have a small issue. It's not really a problem, but I have encountered the Coil Wine much more often with these cards compared to others. To be honest, Coil Wine isn't very bothersome unless the noise is very loud. It doesn't affect performance at all, it's just a noise. However, nearly all the ROG Strix graphics cards I've used in the past had this Coil Wine noise at a level that was quite annoying. When running games or programs that load the graphics card, it makes a sound similar to a pressure cooker. If I wasn't wearing headphones, it could be really bothersome. It's not just the graphics cards, though. The ASUS ROG Strix laptops I used also had a high coil whine noise. This could be considered a general issue with ASUS because I encountered it much less with other brands. So, in conclusion, if coil whine doesn't bother you and your budget allows, you can consider choosing ROG Strix GPUs. Now, let's move on to the top of the tier list. As I mentioned, actually this card would be second and the ROG Strix would be first, but I later changed my mind. Gigabyte Aorus Master. I place it at the top of all GPUs because of the mini screen, build quality, and cooling performance. You might not be able to find the Aorus Master for all graphics cards, so you can consider the Aorus Elite as an alternative. Both GPUs are very similar in terms of quality. The ranking for the RTX 3000 series was as follows. When the RTX 4000 series came out, the naming changed. Aorus Extreme is now used for water-cooled GPUs. Therefore, Aorus Master has taken the place of Aorus Extreme in the ranking. Currently, the top air-cooled graphics cards from Gigabyte use the Aorus Master. All right, let's finish the video slowly. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care and bye.